Hello, I wanted to make a real quick video about um, how to use VR NDI um, along with a, another plugin called Noob that allows you to see uh, the work that you're doing in Resolve and uh, be able to see it inside of a VR headset. The, um, the way this works is so uh, you're going to need uh, a couple of pieces of software. So I'm, I'm, in, I'm in Resolve here and um, we have a over under 360 uh, video, so stereoscopic 360 video. Um, to get started, the first thing you're going to need are um, some software. So I'm going to pull this up. <clears throat> Okay, so the software you're going to need um, first is a, um, a set of tools called NDI. NDA, NDI is a um, is essentially some you can kind of think of them as video routers, and so they can take video streams from a variety of different sources and reroute them uh, to other places. Um, in this example, I'm just going to show you how to use it locally uh, on uh, your computer. But um, you can also use, there's a, NDI also has a system called Bridge um, that you can look up and look how to connect to. And um, that's actually how we often will work with remote workstations. So if you have a client that is needs to see the color grade or something, but they're not in the room with you. You can actually send a VR NDI signal out over the internet uh, over kind of a private um, private relay, I guess, that would allow an outside person um, to be able to see what's actually happening on the timeline. Um, I will also often use this for remoting into my workstation here at the office. Uh, say if I'm at home and I wanna check on, in on something, I mean, we will also use this for allowing, um, say, artists who are working on a project um, to be able to con directly connect to a workstation that might be here locally so they can access all the data, all the different footage, but they may be uh, located elsewhere, um, either in the United States or uh, in other countries. And, they, and so the, using this, they can remote into a workstation and then send out an NDI signal to their local PC and be able to see their remote timeline uh, inside of a VR headset. I'm not going to go over the remote side of it, but um, this should run you through the basics of how to get it installed. So um, first, first thing you're going to do is you're going to download NDI tools uh, for Windows here um, and uh, install that on your computer. Um, you should be able to figure that out. You can just go to NDI video, NDI.video up here and um, that will get you uh, to this site here. Go ahead and just download that software, install it. Uh, you probably have to restart the computer and then you've got NDI installed and it should, um, it should auto start after installation um, on your PC when you're running stuff. Um, the, another, the next piece of software that you're gonna need is one called Nob Display. Um, so you can get this from a company called timeandpixels.com. That is their uh, website address up there um, but specifically you're gonna need the NDI version so this one is $76 um, it essentially works as a node inside of Resolve that allows you to send out a, a video stream from the timeline out to NDI so this <clears throat> so this will act as a bridge to get you to, to to send a signal into the NDI system, which then you, which then routes the, the video um, signal, um, and then the third part that you're going to need to be able to view that NDI signal inside of a VR headset is the tool VR NDI. Uh, this is made by a company called Lightsail out in Los Angeles, and uh, this is a, a tool that <clears throat> works with VR headsets that will tap into that VR or tap into that NDI stream and then uh, correctly display it inside of a VR headset. Um, I will also need to mention that you'll, you're will you gonna need a VR headset. And then you're also going to need uh, something like this, like a link cable um, which can, or a tethered headset which connects directly to your PC. Um, <clears throat> uh, I, I definitely, I usually recommend making sure that you have a physical tether, although it is possible with a Quest to do a, what they call air link. Um, 
I find that that adds a layer of compression to the video signal and uh, it, it tends to look better and cleaner by using a physical connection between the headset and uh, your PC. So, um, so just as a disclaimer, um, I, um, I, I am not sponsored by any of these companies. Um, these are just tools that we use internally and that we have bought, um, bought internally. Um, the uh, no display, like I said, is $76 and VR NDI is $100. Um, um, and then NDI tools is free. So, um, uh, so if, so you will need to purchase those in order for this to, to work. So, um, once you, um, once you, so, uh, VR NDI just runs as a, as, as a standalone app. So go ahead and you can, you can buy that and install it. Um, no display will also, um, uh, needs to be installed and you can follow the instructions on their page on how to install it um, so that Resolve can find it. it. It basically comes in as a, um, it's an open uh, open uh, OFX plugin. So once you have those things installed, let's go ahead and hop back over to uh, Resolve here. Um, so I'm in my edit page. Um, and if you've seen some of my other videos, a lot of the times when I'm talking about seeing things inside of a VR headset, I'm usually in the Fusion page um, here. Um, and in the Fusion page, there's actually options to send a VR, a VR, a signal directly to a local VR headset. Um, it is important to note that you currently cannot send out a VR, you cannot send out an NDI signal using Nob out of Fusion. Um, so fusion and seeing things inside of a headset only will work if you are at a local machine. Um, there is not a solution that I'm aware of currently to send out a signal from fusion specifically. And that goes for fusion inside of resolve and then also fusion standalone. Uh, there is a, there, if you have a tethered headset locally, you can definitely see what you're doing inside of uh, fusion, which you can see my other videos about, but if you are, um, uh, but if you are working remotely, you won't be able to see this over NDI. So just just be ahead of the, be aware of that. The only the only footage that you can really see is basically from a timeline. So it has to be footage that's in a timeline, uh, such as this edit timeline here. Um, and it will also work when you're in the color page. This can also you be used like um, on a, several of the projects that we've worked with recently. Uh, the colorist uh, would use this whole system for accurately seeing um, uh, all of their, all the, all the footage in VR so they could make all of their adjustments and power windows as required. Um, so uh, to get Nob set up, um, you want to come to the color page in Resolve, which is uh, this icon down here. And um, you should have a window that looks like this. Um, and what you really want is this nodes uh, be able to see this nodes window. Um, if you don't see that, just click on this button up here that says nodes and, um, and you'll get this. If you've used kind of the color suite um, and resolve, uh, you should kind of know where that, uh, that is. One thing to know about node display, which I, um, which is this here, is that it actually doesn't work. You don't, you don't want to put it on a clip like right here. This, this is the nodes for the clip. We actually want to change this to the timeline. So if we come to the timeline, then we can see our our node is displayed there. Here, I'm just gonna delete this because often you might not have anything in the timeline, um, and so if you need to connect that, um, you just you can click on your FX tab to get all of your different open FX uh, plugins that are available to you. And if you need to find it, you can hit the search, and you can just type in node. and um, and then you should you should see this. Just you'll drag this into the timeline uh, set of nodes. Um, don't put it in your clip. And then just drag from the green dots and just connect the node display like so. And so uh, and so we ha we'll have some settings that show up here. Um, you can adjust these for, um, uh, for performance reasons usually. So usually you might want to have this FPS be, say, the frame rate of your timeline. This one's in particular is 2997. Um, you can also choose some image scaling if you're having some performance issues um, or if you just don't need it in, 
to, to be streaming out the full resolution of the timeline. This particular one is, uh, I believe, 5760 by 5760. So I'm just going to keep that on 100%. Um, and then you can also, if you wish, uh, choose to have it run by CPU or GPU, but we definitely recommend running this on the GPU. Um, now, if you want to just verify that information is being sent from the timeline, so anytime we scrub through here, all of that information from the timeline should be being sent here into the Nob display, which is then going to allow us to connect it to NDI. Um, uh, to just kind of verify that there is footage in there, you could hit this open display and that should open up a window here. Oh, I've... <clears throat> and then as I scrub through here, um, that's kind of hard to show these at the same time. Here, let's move this over. Um, so as, as you see here, as I, as I scrub through my timeline, it's being reflected in my node display. Um, and that, that just helps me verify that information is flowing through the system correctly and that there is information being sent by Nob out into the NDI system. Um, so I'm just gonna minimize that. Um, uh, bum, bum, bum. So the next thing I wanna do is I just want to open up VR NDI and I already have it open here. Um, and uh, one, this is just kind of like an order of operations thing. Generally, when you're using Nob and VR NDI, is always start resolve first and start Nob first. And you want both of those pieces of software running before you before you start up NDI uh, VR. I'm sorry, when you, before you start up VR NDI. Um, uh, otherwise, VR NDI might not be able to find uh, the source uh, for Nob if if you start. And VR NDI first, and then you start Resolve, it might not find it. So uh, start Resolve, start Node, and then open up VR NDI. Um, so I've got that open here. Sorry, there you go. Um, so normally when you first open up NDI, VR NDI, it's just gonna be blank like this. Um, it usually will start up full screen like this. So I will, I will usually just hit that button just so I can, because I'm going to want to click on this VR button and maybe the exit button later. Um, just kind of some navigational things is that you can click on uh, this gear icon to get your settings. By default, the settings should show up. Um, we want to make sure that our switch is set to NDI and not to spout uh, for this workflow. And then if we select our NDI source down here, you'll notice that there's nothing there. It's blank. Um, and that's because we need to tell VR NDI, okay, there's a signal out there for us, but we need to go look for it. So by clicking this button here, this refresh sources, then if Nob is running properly, then we should then see a, um, uh, a thing down here that will allow us to connect. Um, it will look a little bit differently if you are connecting via like a remote workflow. So if you're using Bridge, which is a different, which is a different tool for sending out the video over the internet, it's a little different than this. Um, we'll probably have to cover that in a different video, but um, uh, but working locally, it should look like something like this. So you should see the name of your computer, and then you should see this Nob and display NDI connect. And so that's going to be the signal that you're going to want to click on is the the one um, that has your name, uh, your computer's name on it. So I'm going to click on that, um, and then we'll also see like there isn't anything selected yet. Before we can see any video, uh, we also need to tell VR NDI uh, our resolution settings. So I'm going to scroll down here. As I mentioned, um, this the my timeline is 5760 by 5760, but for just bandwidth issues and just for display issues, I'm just going to choose 4096 by 4096 um, because that's we're working in stereoscopic 360. And so we're working in a one by one format. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna choose this one for now. Um, you know, we can choose higher resolution formats if we need to, but um, but for this project, let's just choose this one. And then, oh, there we go. Okay, so now we've got our, we kind of see our over under image here, um, but it's not being displayed quite right. Um, and that's where we wanna set these settings here. So you can choose either between, if your footage is VR 180, so like a side by side, or over under, um, or well, well, this is just 180 is going to be obviously just uh, uh, half of the sphere, and then 360 is going to be all the way around. And then we also need to say because this is a stereoscopic footage, I'm also going to need to tell it that it is stereoscopic. And then here I can I can choose my my 
uh, my format for that. And so if you're working in a, in a 180 format, you might need to have this in 180 and side by side like this. Um, but our, our particular project here is a 360 and it's top bottom. So that's our format. And um, so now we can do a couple things. Um, so I'm just gonna click this gear icon and, and then I can actually, if I want to, I can just click and drag within my uh, viewer here if I want to see something. I think by default, this shows you the left eye. Um, uh, but uh, if you're watching this, you're probably more interested in being able to see it in a headset. So it really can't be simpler. Um, because I'm running an Oculus headset, I am also running another piece of software, um, which is the MetaQuest Link. So we are running this software, which essentially allows a standalone headset like the Quest to act like a tethered headset and run directly on my PC. So you also need to make sure that this software is running. Uh, make sure that this is also is running before you start VR NDI, um, otherwise it might not work. So, uh, so yeah, start, start Quest Link. Make sure that that works. Then start Resolve. Um, then start Nob, and then start VR NDI. And if you do it in that order, then all of this should work. Um, if you if you open up things in a different order, it might uh, struggle. So, um, all right. So we're in there, and I'm just going to click uh, the VR button. And all right, there we go. So we can see, um, so you can see me looking around in the space and I'm actually getting it in proper stereo depth. Um, while I'm inside my viewport, the controllers do work and um, I can do things, I can set my color space. So because, you know, say if I'm, going for quest we could set it to quest um, and these are some uh, color managed profiles we've got p3 here um, i can also change my uh, uh, my stereoscopic layout in here if i need to um, but i'm going to leave it i'm going to leave those as are and then and then, um, and then i can just use my a or my b buttons and if i click away then i can get rid of that menu and now i'm looking inside my headset now the cool thing is is if so I'm just gonna scroll, I'm just looking at my other monitor here and uh, I'm just gonna scroll through my timeline. And now you can see that this is, that this is working. Um, because I have a bunch of effects on this, in this particular project, it might not play back smoothly because I'm recording and all that. But, um, but when you're watching this in VR, um, it should also allow you to to just play back the footage um, inside the timeline. So I can do that from the, I can see that from my, um, my the color page here. And then I can also see this um, if I go, so I'm just gonna pop over to my, so let me switch monitors real quick. So, so basically I'm, I'm just, right now I'm just scrubbing between here and I can see it updating inside my headset. Um, this also works if I hop to the edit tab. Um, but again, as I mentioned, this will not work if you are in the fusion tab uh, here. Um, but yeah, so that's basically how to get that all set up. Um, hopefully that helps. All right, uh, good luck out there. All right, bye.